Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Tatka and I'm here today to introduce you to a new feature that's been made available in some of the more recent releases of the ThingWorks platform that you may not have realized was actually there. I'm talking about our next generation composer interface that's been introduced in the 7.4 and later releases of ThingWorks. Today I'll be walking you through how to enable and access the new composer user interface and also give you a brief tour of the new environment. We'll talk about some of the changes that have been made and what new functionality is available. So without further ado, let's dive right into the current Composer environment and see how this all works. So here I am at the tried and true Composer that we've all come to know as we work with the ThingWorks platform. But since I've recently upgraded to the 8.0 version of the platform, I'd like to enable and work with the new Composer user interface. By default, this interface is disabled, so the first action to take is to enable it. This is done by going to My User Menu in the upper right-hand corner of the screen selecting Preferences, and checking the option Turn on New Composer Features. I'll go ahead and click Done. Once I've done this, you'll notice that a new Composer link has been added to the menu bar at the top of the screen. Clicking this will take me to the new Composer interface. Right away, you'll notice that the uh, style of the home page has been updated. While the layout has remained similar to the original Composer, there are a few changes I'd like to walk you through uh, that we've implemented to make navigating and working within the platform simpler. First, let's start with the navigation pane on the left. You'll notice that at the top of this page, you now have the option to specify a project context. If I choose a project here, any entities I create will automatically be added to the specified project, making it easier than ever to keep your newly created entities organized. Below the project context, you'll also notice that there are now two tabbed views in the navigation pane. The first is for recently accessed entities and will allow me to quickly access any entities that I may have worked with not too long ago. These recently accessed entities are persisted across sessions and if you like, you can remove any recent entities from this area by, by hovering over them and by clicking the X that appears to their right. By switching over to the Browse tab, this will give you access to a more traditional ThingWorks entity browsing experience. You'll be able to quickly review entities of a particular type by selecting the type filter from the Browse tab and reviewing the entities in the list to the right. Also note that these two panes are now sizable, allowing you to tailor the layout as you like. You can also completely hide the navigation pane from view to maximize the working space in the right window pane. At the top of the screen, you'll notice that you still have access to search functionality, but this has also seen a few improvements. When searching for a particular entity, you can click on this information icon to bring up a new window pane on the right, which will provide you with a summary of the entity. You can access a more detailed view of the entity by clicking the details link, or if you're ready to begin making changes to this entity right away, you can click the edit button from here as well. While we have this thing in edit mode, let's take a look at a few changes that have been made to the editing interface for this entity. You'll notice right away that the entity navigation pane is now gone. The navigation between the various pages belonging to the entity, like the general page, properties page, and services pages, in the case of this thing, simply select the page from this drop-down menu here at the top of the screen. For properties and alerts belonging to the thing, you can see that these were actually split out into two different tabbed areas. Also, when I choose uh, to add either a new property or alert, it brings that right window pane back into view for me to define it as necessary. While we're looking at alerts, I'll discuss one of the new alert types available within the new Composer that integrates with the analytics engine which has been introduced in the 8.0 release of ThingWorks, the anomaly alert type. As of ThingWorks 8.0, you can now calibrate an anomaly model for incoming stream data from a device. Once the model has been fully trained and calibrated, it monitors the incoming device data to ensure that the values uh, it's reporting match the expected distribution. If the incoming values fall outside of this model, this would trigger any configured anomaly alert. Next, let's take a look at both services and subscriptions. We've overhauled the layout to maximize the working area for the script editor. This first view will show me a listing of all the services or subscriptions that already exist depending on which page I'm on. When I choose to either add a new service or subscription or edit an existing one, you'll notice that it takes me to a separate editing page with a much larger working area when compared to the default views of the classic composer interface. While in this mode, 
I can also jump to other services or subscriptions quickly by using this drop down menu. You'll also notice a new toggle in the subscription editor called linting. When enabled, this will analyze your code on the fly and provide assistance with some common errors that may exist. So as an example, let me just enter some code here. You'll notice that uh, as I type this, there were some errors with this code, so I was able to hover over the icons here, and it's showing me uh, what I could do to correct these errors. In this case, I'm missing an, an ending uh, bracket here. And finally, for events, when creating or modifying events, the event definition would be handled in that right window pane again. Now, I won't go through editing all of the various entity types that are available, but just be aware that they will behave in much the same way as what we've seen here with this thing entity. Let's go back to the home page, and I wanted to highlight a new entity type known as Industrial Connections. This is an entity type that allows you to connect with Kepler's Kep Server EX in order to model, configure, and bind tags that exist within the Kep Server to things in the ThingWorks model. For this demonstration, I won't be going through a full example on this integration, but look for more information on this coming soon. One final note I'd like to make regarding the new Composer is that while it does have many new features and improvements, there are still a few actions you may find yourself being more comfortable handling within the classic Composer environment. Should you ever find yourself in the middle of your work wishing you could go back to the classic Composer at any time, we've got you covered. You may have noticed that while I was going through this demo, that many of the entities had an Edit in Composer icon at the top of the page. Clicking this link would jump you back to that same entity in the Classic Composer environment where you could resume your work immediately. So that about wraps things up for the new Composer. Looking to the future, we are planning to add even more functionality to the new Composer interface with each new version of the ThingWorks platform, so be sure to check our release notes provided with each new version. We are also going to be maintaining a master list in the ThingWorks community detailing what features are available today and also what is currently on our roadmap. I'll include a link to this in the description below. We would also welcome any feedback, questions, or enhancement requests you may have as you work with the new composer yourself, so feel free to let us know what you think by posting your comments to the community or by reaching out to the ThingWorks support team. I hope that you found this video helpful and hope that the new composer interface will help you to be even more successful in developing your own applications within the ThingWorks platform. Thanks for sharing your time with me today and have a great day.